I am... <clears throat> I am Batman. I am the Dark Knight. I am the darkest night before the dawn of darkness and Bane. Oh, Bane. You better listen to this, brother, because I'm going to take that muzzle off your face and I'm going to shove it up your butt. And then I'm going to eat you for breakfast with a nice can of Red Bull. Glock, 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 glock. Ah, bitch. And then I'm going to poop you out. That's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poop you right out of the back cave. And then you're going to, I'm going to flush you. And you're going to, you're going to go, you're going to get flushed in the ocean. And then Nemo is going to be swimming by and he's going to eat you. And then he's, all the other Pixar fishes, they're all going to, it's going to be like Piranha 3D Pixar style with Nemo. And they're going to tear you apart and poop you out. And bottom line, Bane, is you're going to be pooped for the rest of your life. Glad you hear me. You're going to. Wow, that, that got, that got awkward. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm going to jump into the review. Um, yeah, so. The Dark Knight Rises. I saw that um, at the 12.45 screening uh, last night. And as a fan of Batman Begins, you'll see the poster of it right behind me, mounted on my wall. And The Dark Knight, as tre a tremendous loyal fan of both films, it pains me to say that The Dark Knight Rises does not meet expectations. Um, it's a little underwhelming for... A film that's two hours and 45 minutes to only have some parts that are good. Which is not good. Um, I think some of the things that are done right are uh, the technical aspects of the film. You know, the stunts are all very epic in scale. They're all very cool to look at. I think the cinematography is done very well. There's a few scenes that would look pretty good as a wallpaper on my computer. Um, I think Anne Hathaway is a great addition to the the cast or to Nolan's Batman universe. Um, the fact that they've stayed faithful to the comic book character and brought it into this real uh, this reality it's uh, it's amazing to see, and um, I think the whole dynamic between Christian Bale and Hathaway. Catwoman, Batman, Selena Kyle, Bruce Wayne is done very well. And I think had the film focused more on that, um, maybe even just had Catwoman as the main villain, which she is. Like I said, it's a very good character because she is a villain at one point, then she's not. She walks a very thin line between um, good and bad. And I, it just it has... A lot more depth to it that I think that uh, the film would have benefited more if they had stayed with it, but they don't. Instead, they and here's where the problems come in. They focus on Bane, played by Tom Hardy, who I loved in Warrior, um, one of my favorite films uh, last year, who just isn't given much to work with here. I had already heard rumors that the character of Bane was hard to understand because of the, the mask that he wears. Um, the only reason I found that to be true is because I laughed through a lot of the dialogue he delivered. He sounds like Sean Connery underwater. It's severely distracting. Actually, he sounds like Sean Connery at the end of Untouchables when he's crawling on the floor, gurgling blood out of his mouth. It's very cartoonish, it's it's very distracting, it pulls the menace away from the from the visual menace of the character. It's it's not fitting to the character and all sorts of things. It is a horrible horrible um decision to have that character talk the way that he does. And um and 
he's in it for the majority of the movie. So it, it's a problem. Um, not only is his voice not fitting, um, his motives and his agenda, not only are they recycled from Ra's al Ghul, the uh, character played by Liam Neeson in Batman Begins, um, but it's also kind of just confusing because at one point he unleashes prisoners and then he tells them to take back their city and then he establishes some kind of a people's court head by the scarecrow which I didn't buy um, and thought was a little lame and stupid to be quite honest but um, and then he, he you know wants to no matter what he's gonna blow up this city so whatever he does in the meantime is kind of pointless it, it just it none of it really just makes sense and it kind of produces plot holes um, and uh, just big problem with the villain. I think the villain just uh, just ruins the film, actually. Um, and then, you know, obviously comparing it to the Joker and the Dark Knight, that's not going to help you either because that there's no topping that at all. And um, just uh, so many things wrong with this movie that just should not have happened given the amount of time and the amount of money that they that they uh used to make this film it just it doesn't make sense for this to be such a flawed motion picture um but unfortunately it is but i am willing to give it another shot the, you know obviously i'm in the minority because 86% of the critics on rotten tomatoes gave it a favorable review Although I have to say it's probably influenced by the amount of death threats critics are getting for panning the film. Um, you know, critics could just be fearful of their lives, which I understand. Uh, but um, right now, at this very moment, Dark Knight Rises gets a C plus, and that's being gracious. Um, I'll give it another shot, watch it, and then I might update you guys later. But for right now, it's a clunker.